Let us pray. God, our Father, forgive us of times we refuse to acknowledge acknowledge you before men, acknowledge you in our heart, acknowledge you in the events that occur and happen around us. Lord, as you have given us this new day, open our eyes that we may see the miracles that are bound with us, around us. Forgive us for certain priorities that exclude yours. Teach us by your word that in this 30th day of our Lenten season, we may come to once again true knowledge of your son and avoid a situation where many have rejected you by their personal thinking. Father, for every one of us here this morning, I pray, let your word of knowledge, let your word in all its richness find a home within us. May, may it live within us that we may always be ready to teach others. Same, for we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thirtieth day of our Lenten season. It's the Thursday of the fourth week of Lent. Shall we take the readings? The reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once to your people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, this is your God, O Israel. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt? The Lord said to Moses, I see how stiff naked this people is. Let me alone, then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, saying, Why, O Lord? Should, you, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, with such great power and with so strong a hand? Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent, he brought them out, that he might kill them in the mountains and exterminate them from the face of the earth? Let your blazing wrath die down. Relent in punishing your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he has threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Our fathers made a calf in Horeb and adored the molten image. They exchanged their glory for the image of grass-eating bullock. 
Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. They forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Then he spoke of exterminating them, but Moses, his chosen one, we stood him in the bread, in the bridge to turn back his destructive wrath. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Glory to you, O Word of God. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O Word of God. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Glory to you, O Word of God. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O Word of God. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is not true. But there is another who testifies on my behalf. And I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You send emissaries to John and he testifies to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this so that you may be saved. He was a burning, he was a burning and shining lamp. For a while you were content to rejoice in his light, but I have, test, I have testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf, but you have never heard his voice or seen his form. You do not have his word remaining in you because you do not believe in the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think you have eternal life through them. Even they, test, they testify on my behalf, but you do not want to come to me to have life. I do not accept human praise, moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of my father, but you do not accept me. Yet, if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept praise from another and do not seek the praise that comes from the only God, the Father. The one who will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For if you had believed in Moses, you would have believed in me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe in his writing, how will you believe my words? Beloved, the gospel of the Lord. 
praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, shall we observe just a moment of silence over God's word? Arise, Catholic faithful. Rejoice and renew. Today, the theme that I'd love to reflect on, look at unbelievable unbelief. Unbelievable unbelief. If we go to the first reading, we see how Moses intercedes for the people of Israel, knowing very well that these people had become so hard in their own ways, thinking for themselves that they know their own God. Indeed, their God had become their stomachs. God was, God's anger was burning and was ready to destroy them as he says to Moses, I see how stiff-necked this people is. Let me alone then that my wrath may blaze against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. This is a portion of scripture that cannot, and I cannot, it, it stop to amaze me, the humility of Moses because God was going to destroy everybody and use Moses to begin. What a great way. He could have said, yes, then it will be about me. Then it will be, the beginning will be about me. No more about Abraham. I will, then I will make a great nation out of you. But Abraham, but Moses says, no, no. This is not so. You are sworn to your father, to, 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 to our father Abraham. He is the one to whom we are going to. It's Abraham that we have to rely on. God, do not ask for me. I am only your servant. Jesus will speak about it in the gospel. That when people come in their own name, when they begin to speak in their own name, we are so ready to follow them. We are so ready to follow church, human church or, you know, society laws, traditional values. But when it comes to real authentic scripture, we are lacking. We are able to follow human ways. But when it comes to true and authentic scripture, then we begin to find all kinds of excuses. Dear friends, do we really know God? It is 30 days into Lent. Jesus is angrily addressing the Pharisees for refusing him. Now we are equal and the same. Many of us have heard of the man called John Newton. He was a British slave and tra slave trader who experienced grace of God while returning home to England aboard the storm ship that marvelously saved him, that he was saved from. When he was saved from the storm, Newton realized that no, slavery is bad and he needs to change. 25 years later, when he had already become a pastor, now talking about the ills that he was in, he penned down the words of a song to his congregation on a New Year's Day of 1773. Then he was to give them the song, the, 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 what the title of the song or the sermon was, Faith's Review and Expectation. Faith's Review and Expectation. Today, that song has become one of the best known hymns in the world under its better known title. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. But in this story, that is about a man who was so used to giving orders 
on the ship, beating them, now had become a slave to God. This, this is what God expects of us. One line of the song is what really applies to our reading today. He says, I was blind, but now I see. Just like Saul before he became St. Paul. Dear friends, if we do not admit our blindness, there is nothing that can save us. This is the unbelievable unbelief that we who don't believe are not ready to be helped. We call it many names. We call it many things. Dear friends, this is not religion. This is known as worldly blindness, sad as it may. Now, besides this kind of spiritual blindness, there is another kind of spiritual blindness, which is much even worse. And then this we find in the gospel for today, also reflected in the first reading. It is called deliberate blindness, based on personal prejudice against Christ or God. You say to yourself, this is not from God. Meanwhile, you are not basing it on scripture. Just because you don't like it, you say it's not from God. This is deliberate blindness. Because you, you tell yourself what is, and then you refuse to accept. This is a blindness that goes against all logic and reason. And it is therefore deserving of the most severe judgment. Somebody can say that I will not forgive this person. I can't forgive him. If I forgive, I can't forget. Dear friend, I'm sorry, but this is a deliberate blindness. You decide to be blind to forgive. That is not good. Like the, like the, the, the Pharisees, they said that, no, we can't accept Jesus. Let our minds turn to our scripture today. Indeed, the passage shows how two characteristics of this spiritual blindness comes up. Firstly, people who are faced, or those of us faced with spiritual blindness, will reject all the witness to Jesus Christ, all witnesses that give that gives account of Jesus. Jesus is in your life. He's the word incarnate, yet we refuse. Despite the many witnesses they had, the witness of John, the witness of the miracles, the witness of God the Father, and the witness of scriptures, they still refuse to believe in him. Are they different from us? This morning that you are in is a miracle. Are you just lifting your hand and praising God? Why are we? What are you waiting for? Which other miracle are you looking for? This is why many of us, in even 30 days of Lent, we have not changed. If anything, we have become worse because not to have changed is to become worse in the Lord. What is the cause of this unbelievable unbelief? It is caused by sin, sin in us. Jesus diagnosed the root of the problem in John chapter 5, verse 42 to 44. But I know you, that ye have not love of God in you. And I, I come in my Father's name, and ye re receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you would receive. How can ye believe which receive honor of another and seek not the honor that comes from God only. When human beings claim that they are, we begin to accept their testimony. But when God gives us his word, we are fumbling. Do you really believe? Dearly beloved, have you seen in our study, we have seen in our study how God's word this morning 
is telling us, blind, we are blind. It is my prayer that today, that all of us will examine, will examine ourselves to see if we are like that. And if we are, let us not choose to remain in that state. Ask the Lord to help you to love him and to seek for the honor that only he can give. And please remember this. There are no, there are none so blind as those who refuse to see. May the Lord help us. If you refuse to see, nothing can help us. Pope Benedict the 15th says to us, this love for Christ must ever be the chiefest and most agreeable result of knowledge of the Holy Scripture. This love for Christ must ever be the chiefest and the most agreeable result of the knowledge of Holy Scripture. So therefore, if you say you if you say you know the Holy Scripture, then your love of God must be super. Let us ask ourselves, how much of God's love is in me? God richly bless you. Amen.